This is chapter number 12, and in this chapter, we are going to start the study of what is called unsaturated compounds. In the previous chapter, we have seen the family of alkanes, and in the family of alkanes, we learn how to name these substances and also some of the physical properties. But in this chapter, we will be dealing with substances that contain double bonds, like the family of alkenes, that will be the ending and the family of alkynes, and also the family of aromatic. This is an aromatic ring, and we understand that these carbons need to have at least one double bond to be considered an unsaturated compound. Before we explore the details about the unsaturated compound, it is important to recall what will be the shapes of these molecules. Reviewing the chapter number 11, we know that the family of alkanes contain carbons with only single bonds, and in this case, the hybridization is an sp3 with the shape of a tetrahedral and an angle of 109.5. When it comes to the family of alkenes with unsaturated compounds having only double bonds, we know this carbon around the central atom will be a trigonal planar shape an sp2 carbon and an angle of 120 degrees. When it comes to the family of alkynes, when we see a triple bond, the shape of the molecule around the central atom is linear. The hybridization is sp with an angle of 180 degrees. In this video, I'm making major emphasis in the discussion of nomenclature of the family of alkenes. In this case, we see here the simplest alkene that we can have, and that is when we have two carbons, it's going to have the name of ethene, that is an IUPAC name, or a common name or trivial name of ethylene. For the same compound, the molecule of ethene, we see here that we can have the formula as expanded showing every bond, or we can also have the formula condensed. We also have the molecule of propene when we have three carbons. When we have three carbons, we don't need to state what is the position of the double bond because there is only one choice. What that means is that if I write the double bond in a different position, I will still have exactly the same molecule. When naming an alkene, we will find the longest carbon chain that includes the double bond, and we need to indicate how long is the parent hydrocarbon chain by using the prefix that is related to the alkane. For example, if we see here, we have a hydrocarbon that is a saturated compound, belongs to the family of alkane, that is the molecule of propane because it has three carbons long. Once we change to the family of alkene, what we have is a change in the family name. The prop states that is three carbons long, and both of the carbons are included in this hydrocarbon chain. We do not need to include the number one. We don't need to label it when it is for three carbons long because there is only one choice. But once we have a substituent, like in this case, now we need to state what are the numbers of the carbon to bring the branches. So we need to label what is the longest hydrocarbon chain and also label the branches as we have done in the family of alkanes. For this substance, we will say that this is a 2-methylpropene. And it's understood that the carbon-carbon double bond is always carbon 1 and 2. Even though we have both of these numbers for those, we only need to state which first carbon is part of the name of the molecule. Now let's discuss the possible compounds that we can have with four carbons. In this case, we are showing different isomers when we have four carbons and eight hydrogens. The first molecule has a double bond in the first carbon, we need to state in the name of the substance, this is a but because it's four carbons long, is ENE because it belongs to the family of alkene, 
and we stating that the carbon-carbon double bond is in position number one. Of course, the double bond is formed between carbon one and two, but we only need to state one of the two carbons that contains the double bond. We have a different kind of isomer for butene, and that is when the double bond is between carbon two and three. And intentionally, I have labeled both sides so the molecule is symmetric. So if I start on this side, I get the double bond one, two, or in this side, one, two. So it does not matter which way I look at it. It is the same substance and that will be two butene. When the molecule is drawn in this way as a condensed formula, we cannot tell if we have a cis isomer or a trans isomer. We have seen what is a cis and trans compound in the family of cycloalkanes, and we have further discussion in the next slide. The concept of geometric isomers is not new to us, as we have discussed this topic in the chapter of alkanes. The first case we see here is when we have cyclobutane with substituents in group number one and two, position one and two, and we have a cis isomer when the two methyl groups are facing towards the same side of the overall plane of the ring and trans when they are facing in opposite directions. We also have a 1,4 dimethyl cyclohexane, which is in the position trans because they are facing opposite side of the overall ring. When it comes to the family of alkenes, we will also find geometric isomers when the two hydrogens are on opposite side and cis when they are within the same side. After understanding the concept of isomerism, geometric isomers will be the cis compound when the two hydrogens are going towards the same side or the two large groups are going towards the same side and trans when the two larger groups are going towards opposite side. When naming the substance for the alkenes, we are following the IUPAC rule which states that the first thing to do is to find what is the longest hydrocarbon chain that includes both of the carbons of the double bond in this case, that is a but is the longest chain, it's four carbons long. Family name is ENE because it's an alkene. And the locant is to place the position of the double bond. In both cases, we say here that is carbon one and two, three, four. So the double bond is in carbon between carbon two and three. This is also the same one, two, three, and four. So the double bond is between carbon two and three but we're only going to write the carbon number two that it belongs to, the position, and now we're gonna place cis or trans according to what is the structure. We need to see the open structure to understand if it is a cis or trans. When it is in the condensed formula, we will not know if it is cis or trans. Now what we see here is, this is a different expression showing that these two groups are on opposite side and also, used in the skeletal form. So we see in the skeletal form, the two lines, the two bonds are showing that this is a cis compound. And when you see these bonds on opposite side, is indicating that this is a trans compound. It is time to practice the nomenclature of a haloalkene. In this case, we see that instead of having alkyl groups, we have two chlorines substituting on the double bond. The first thing to do is always to find what is the longest hydrocarbon chain. If I start in this direction, the double bond will attain a number of one, two, and three. If I come from this side of the hydrocarbon, one, two, three, four. Therefore, I need to assign number one to the carbon that is closer to a carbon that has a double bond. The second thing is, I know that this one has seven carbons long, therefore it's going to be a hep. So from the name heptane, it's going to change to heptene. So we know that this is a heptene, and that three is to indicate what is the position of the double bond. Now we look for what are the substituents. In this case, we have two alkyl groups. We have 
instead of two alkyl groups, we have two chloros, and we have to state the position of the two chloros, and this is carbon number three and carbon number four, where we have three chloro, uh, three and four dichloro, and this is trans because those are on opposite side.